Hi, my name is Matt Reisinger of the Reisinger Homes. Welcome to my video blog dedicated to building science and fine craftsmanship. Behind me here is a house under construction that is utilizing Joe LaSebrick's perfect wall concept. Building Science Corporation and Joe came up with this concept many years ago and I'm a huge fan of theirs. And I want to tell you about that concept. What if I could tell you that I would build you a house that would last 500 years? Not a house that would last 100 years, but 500 years. That's the concept we've got behind me here. The idea is that this house is so durable, so uh, able to withstand rot and, dis and decay, UV rays, all those things that happen in time, that literally this house will still be standing 500 years from now. There's not too many structures in the world that you can think of that have lasted that long a time. But if you think about the most durable structure that comes to mind, sometimes I think about, let's say, the uh, Roman Colosseum or the Parthenon. Those are structures that have been around for thousands of years, not just hundreds of years. And what were those made from? Those were built from rocks. Rocks were a great building material for many, many thousands of years here in the world. But of course, we've got a different clientele today. We can't just build houses from rocks anymore because rocks didn't do a great job of controlling the air or the indoor environment, even though they were a separator from the outside of the inside. So let me talk to you first about environmental separators. There's four things that every building has to control. There's basically four control layers. And the order of importance of these is super important. So first, let's start with water. Every house has to manage water. Rain that comes from the sky is the first thing that's gonna rot out a house. And so we need to control water. The next thing we need to control is air. If air is leaking into our buildings uncontrollably, we're not gonna be able to build a very comfortable house and my clients are not gonna be real happy with that house. The next thing we need to control is vapor. If it's real humid outside and that vapor is driving into the inside, again, it's not going to make a very comfortable house. And the last thing houses need to control is thermal, heat and cold. If it's cold outside, we want that house to be warm. And in Texas, where I'm building here, it's the exact opposite. Nine months of the year is really hot outside and we want that house to be comfortable on the inside. This order of importance is, of course, super important because if we're controlling thermal, let's say, we've done a great job of insulating a house, but we're not controlling air or water leaking into that house, it's not going to make for a very comfortable house for the clients, but it's also not going to make for a very durable house. It's certainly not going to last 500 years if we have leaks uh, coming from the outside, especially when we're talking about bulk water. And where's the best location for those control layers? I would say the best location for, all, for those control layers is ultimately on the outside of the house rather than on the inside of the house. Our houses today are not made from rocks in the structure anymore. Houses in America are made of mainly wood with a little bit of steel. And steel and wood are very sen sensitive to both temperature and humidity. And of course, they're very sensitive to water. It's ultimately water that's the number one enemy for your house after all. So let's talk about where we put those control layers. Let's first talk about insulation. If you think about insulation in most houses in America, that insulation is in between the structure of the house, in between the two by four stud bay, let's say. Is that really the best place for that insulation though? If I'm cold in the winter time, am I gonna put a fleece jacket on or am I gonna try and stuff that fleece jacket in between my ribs? Of course, we're gonna put that jacket on the outside of the house. So I would say really the best place for the thermal control in your house is on the outside of your structure. That way your structure and your studs and your metal and everything that's, that's uh, holding up and supporting your house is controlled from heat and cold extremes, also humidity changes, all those kinds of things. Let's talk next about air control. Air control is also super important for us because remember air control, air brings with it humidity if it leaks into our houses. And if air is leaking into the house and it's bringing humidity with it, there's a very good chance that it's gonna find a cold condensing surface and that moisture is ultimately gonna condense out of the air and land on your structure. And that again is gonna bring down the durability. The other thing that air carries with it is contaminants from the outside. I'm super sensitive to uh, mold and pollen. I took my Claritin this morning and so I want a house to live in where I control how much outside air comes in and when. And if we're not controlling that on the outside of the house, we're really relying on nature to provide that, uh, that, that air infiltration and exfiltration. And that's not, a good, that's not a good way to do it. Then we only have fresh air when the wind blows, let's say. So once we control the airflow, ultimately then we can heat and cool, we can dehumidify, we can filter the air, and when we need fresh air and 
and desire fresh air, we can bring it in on our terms and we can filter out those contaminants first. That air control layer is super important. So ultimately that's the perfect wall right there. A control layer for both water, air, and vapor on the outside of the structure. And then the thermal control layer outboard of that. And that's what this house has here behind me. You can see we used uh, a fully applied peel and stick membrane on the outside. This happens to be Carlisle CCW 705. There's some other ones out there as well. This is a 40 mil uh, membrane that has some self-healing properties. It's very thick. But then we're gonna control that membrane's temperature by putting the thermal control on the outside. So in effect, this house is gonna have a membrane that's gonna be kept in the air conditioned portion of the house. And all the insulation is going on the outside of this house rather than putting an insulation behind that layer. So now my, my uh, uh, air, water, and vapor barrier on the outside of the house, on the outside of the structure, is in a controlled environment. The insulation is going outboard of that. And then of course, once we have the perfect wall, all we have to do is tilt that perfect wall and we get the perfect roof. So you can see, hopefully in the photos here of this house behind me, we've got um, a peel and stick roofing membrane. This happens to be Carlisle's uh, 300 WIP HT or WIP 300 HT. And then we've added six inches of insulation on top of that. And then we've put um, a one by four strapping on top of all of that. So we've got an air control or we've got a uh, basically a rain screen layer on top of that insulation on the whole outside of the house. This particular house is going to get clad with a metal siding and a metal roofing, um, which happens to be white in color. But you could really use any cladding on the outside of this house. And now that cladding, its main purpose is just to protect everything below it from the UV exposure. Other than that, that cladding can leak a little bit of water. We're not super worried about cock joints failing, any of that kind of stuff, because everything that's controlling air, water, and vapor behind that is all also helped out by that insulation layer being outboard of the house. This is really an amazing system. This is the first time I've, I've truly done the perfect wall on an entire house. I hope that you've learned something today and thank you for joining me. We'll see you next time.